You think when people are, you know, doing business here, they use that bench fully restore their HP and MP before like their annual review one on one? Yeah, it's 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 the one bench that does this. <laughs> it's a secret special bench. If you take a nap on that bench, you're gonna you're gonna nail the interview. I know it. Oh yeah. Cloud? Huh? You're Cloud, right? Where's your second pauldron, Holy Cloud? Holy shit! It's cool, bro. We went through training together. Damn. So you're still alive and kicking, huh? Some of the guys heard you got smoked, but I told them it was all bullshit. Hey, sit tight, man. I'm gonna go get Kunzel. I'll be right back. Old buddy. Hey, how come your friends matched uh, uh, descriptions okay? of the people we're looking for? <laughs> cool, that's cool, bud. But you were just... I'm good. Let's keep moving. So here's a crazy thing. That guy says, oh, I'm going to go get Kunsel. I'll be right back. This is a really obscure reference to a faceless NPC from one of the prequel Final Fantasy VII games. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an important character. This is a dude you can talk to who's standing in the corner of a room throughout the game, throughout Crisis Core, and he gets name dropped out of all the things from the, that mm -hmm. stuff. Fucking wild, man. <laughs> like, that picture is the one picture you get a Kunsel if you Google him. Like, there's no now, concept art of him or anything. When I want to get some Kunsel, I just go to, like, the, the German restaurant uh, and then, you know, down the road. <laughs> Oh, they make they make the best kunzel. <laughs> mm. I trust the narrative is intact. Rock solid. The people have embraced the Wu Tai Avalanche conspiracy wholeheartedly. I've almost come to believe it myself. Wu Tai's response? So far, nothing. And if those cowards do react, all the better for us and our story. Very well. Then we shall stay the course. If I may, sir, there was one other matter. Oh? A message from our man Palmer. What happens if some random, you know, low-level employee comes out of the lunch, the break room <laughs> from their lunch, and they just see the president talking Damn. about false flag <laughs> operations? Yeah, yeah. What happens to them? Uh, you're not gonna like what happens, but it does require they sit on the nice bench of uh, the jukebox. Mojo should be at that board meeting, so that'll buy us some time. We need to plan this just right. But also respect the authority of the escalator, not too fast. <laughs> can you just sit and wait for the escalator to bring you all the way up? Yes, you can. Oh, good. Yep. Do you think that's where Professor Hojo is? Where he should be. What's the plan? Little bit of recon. Need to find a way to infiltrate that room. You hear the words coming out of your mouth. We just gotta find that bathroom so we can get into the air duct. What do you Ask mean we? Here, <laughs> what kind of air duct are you gonna fit no in? <laughs> How smelly are Shinra poops? They gotta move so much <laughs> air. The, the air ducts for the bathrooms are extra big because it's the secondary fuel source after Mako. <laughs> they figured out a way to harness the smell. Alright, I'll wait out here. This is that plant's office. Mm -hmm. You can't hang out here. Tifa, it'd be better if you waited inside. Maybe, but this is... Oh, never mind. You're right. Look, just hold on to a towel and pretend to be the person that gives people the towel. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank God. No one's in here. Love to show them what the ones down below look like. Come on. Let's just find that duct. Boy, between our JoJo podcast we just recorded before this and this one, we, we're seeing a lot of toilets today. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. Can you... I'm so disappointed you can't pee. Mm. 
Uh, in the original game, you could flush the toilet at this part for no reason. Uh -huh. <laughs> just, just let people know you're still alive in there. Mm -hmm. Look, um, on guard duty. Right. So, can I go with you? Don't want to be here any longer than I have to. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Just follow behind. Plumbing makes her nervous. <laughs> So in the original game, even Barrett could fit in the ducks. Mm -hmm. And just everybody came along for the ride in this part. <laughs> Further along these air ducts, you can like kind of peep through some gratings to look into different rooms and stuff. And in the original, it wasn't just cloud peeping through. The air ducts were so big, everyone could gather around it in a big circle to all peep through at the same time. The air ducts were just huge. And everyone was such a tiny little chibi Lego person. Colonel, there's rats down here. Yeah, I cannot help but think about the MGS1 vent crawling. I'm sure they're safe. But we live right by Sector 7, and I keep calling and calling, but I still can't get through. I heard that all the phone lines are down. It doesn't mean anything. You sure? Pretty sure. You're gonna find Aerith doing crunches. Uh huh. Strangely enough, we're gonna find this game's Johnny also stuck on the toilet. Barrett's supposed to be keeping him out of there. Come on. <laughs> when you gotta go, you gotta go. He said he wouldn't ride us out. <laughs> Depending on the board's decision, we may start two projects simultaneously rebuilding the plate and the city. Members of the Urban Planning Division will likely take point on both. Director Tuesti has ordered teams to come up with three, five, and ten-year plans. Director Each Sick team Nasty. Needs to come up with a detailed proposal and schedule. We're going to have to put a lot of man hours into this, so we'll need to start ASAP. Does anyone have any questions at all? If not, a question why you're shaking your head so much. It's a really stressful situation. I have to plan out <laughs> building a giant sci-fi city. So when I played this game, when it first came out and I was doing this air duct part, <clears throat> there was a bug that was fairly common in here that hit me. Oh no, uh, you're supposed to, you know, use your basic attacks on those. Oh. Yeah. So what happened is uh, when you, sometimes when you would peer through the gratings, you'd get that little icon at the bottom right saying press the circle button you know to back out and keep crawling through the vents and so you'd hit the circle button and nothing would happen oh you'd just be spying on that meeting forever <laughs> yeah the game wouldn't crash but you were essentially soft locked because you could not exit peering into the the grate <laughs> the big problem was i did all of the vr arena stuff and had gotten up to here and I hadn't saved yet, and had no oh, auto save no. had happened, so I lost like 45 minutes of progress. That really is the most important bench in the whole building, huh? Yeah, so uh, th it. that has been patched out. It's been patched out for like over half a year at this point, but yeah, that, <laughs> that sucked when that happened. I'm telling you, I saw him with my own eyes sauntering down the corridor. We don't have time for this nonsense. Ah. He was as close to me as you are now. The, the shock of it made me spill my tea. Enough already! All right, Bilbo, come on. In the building, my men will deal with them. But, Mr. President, sir, I swear to you... Reeve. Sir, I have the damage assessment for Sector 7. And I'm afraid the figures are catastrophic. Spare us the doom and gloom. Only person in this company that actually does his job. <laughs> yeah, he's else? a very good boy, Reeve. Uh, well, sir, I've also drafted a that reconstruction plan for... Huh? Not with the Ancient in our custody once more. Uh, with respect, sir, Two I don't see words, how... Two words, Reeve. <sighs> Neo Midgar. But, but how can Midgar have even more neon lights? <laughs> In their promised land, we will build a new Mako-powered metropolis. Mr. President, we still don't know for sure that the promised land even... <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. 
Professor Hojo. The test results were within expectations. The specimen is somewhat lacking compared to her pure blood mother, but for our purposes, she should more than suffice. So she can lead us to the promised land? Well, Mr. President, that remains to be seen. I would like your permission to secure her cooperation through more forceful means. Forceful, yet gentle. She is a precious resource that must be handled with care. Personally, I've never had a problem with torture. My armory is at your disposal should you require anything. I had something more psychological in mind. Better to scar the psyche than mar the flesh. <laughs> My armory is at your disposal. I got guys with helicopter hands. Uh, <laughs> what do you want? Proceed as you see fit. However, you will not make the same mistake twice. Is that clear? If I may, Mr. President, I have an idea how we might mitigate the risks. Simply put, we could have the ancient reproduce. In the absence of a second specimen, we would need to identify an alternative mate. I would start with candidates from Soldier. These would, of course, include S and G types. Why, frankly, why are no they always shippers? Kind of why is that so important to them? <laughs> so, what say you all? Hmm. <sighs> I love torture, but even I think that's gross. What the fuck? <laughs> If there is nothing else... Mr. President! Meeting adjourned. Uh, uh, Mr. President, I just please, want to be sir. a good boy! But... but trains, Mr. President. I love trains! I love infrastructure and public transportation, please! Something stinks. I just need people to stop flushing wipes, Mr. President, please! <laughs> it's gross down there! Anything? The man in the lab coat. Head of R&D. We follow him. Okay. And then we kill the son of a bitch. Not until he's led us to Aerith. That's the plan. I really want to know how Reeve got into his position when everyone else is so extremely hilariously unethical and corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Yet the single seemingly good boy has made it all the way up here. Well, somebody has to keep the lights on in this place. I guess so, but I think they, they can find some more evil. They can't do evil without him, which <laughs> might make him the most evil. Mm, yeah. Walking the halls of this very building, who would have believed it? I wonder... Hmm, were I to arrange a face-to-face... -face? <laughs> who are you talking to, bro? How I should like to meet their offspring. The ideas I have. Uh, we fill an entire way. archive of First my own. <laughs> A simple psychoactive agent should suffice. Nothing likely to cause any long-term damage. <laughs> Let's go. Right. <clears throat> it really feels like Hojo has had that thought out loud multiple times of like, <laughs> what would the babies look like? I would love to meet their babies, <laughs> which are fictional at the moment, but they could be a real baby later. <laughs> 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 uh. All right, so that chest had antidotes in it, so uh, there's absolutely stuff that's going to poison us later on. Look, you can't do a hurt comfort fic without somebody to do the hurting, okay? <laughs> Hojo sees his place in the world, he's going to fill it. Uh. So everyone's getting star pendants put on them, so everyone's just immune to poison. Uh, Cloud's got that rune armlet, uh, we won that from uh, the arena uh, stuff we did previous episode. He's still just going to continue being the healing guy a little bit, or a uh, or magic guy. Can cure status effects. Barrett also magic guy this time around with the Supreme Bracer. Ooh, magic Barrett. 
Uh, Supreme Bracer we also got from the arena. Again, star pendants for everybody. Bear's just kind of a bit of uh, everything, magic-wise. <laughs> Attack and support. And Tifa, her feather gloves have been upgraded off screen a bit more, so she's even faster now. And she's got everything related to increasing speed, either through status effects or through uh, the different ATB materia. And she's also got some protection against a slow status effect in case that pops up. Oh, also Cloud has a uh, carbuncle equipped again. We're going to use carbuncle some more. Mm hmm. Because he's just too cute to leave behind. By the way, it's probably been said in the episode where we summoned Carbuncle the first time, don't Google Carbuncle, the word by itself, because it's like a really disgusting, like, sore, and you're just going to get... Yeah? It's bad. Carbuncles <laughs> are also a mythological creature, so if you really want to look that up, either add in Final Fantasy or mythology after that, or else you're going to get some bad Google results. <laughs> This is Gross search cool. is off. Or gem. Carbuncle's a type of gem, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wait a minute. <sighs> Don't move! You're ruining the greasy ponytail look for I everybody. <laughs> what is this? A dozen bullets in your head, unless you open that door right now. He can do it. I've seen his materia. <laughs> you must be the ones who've been stirring up trouble lately. The eco-terrorists? If so, I can't imagine what business you have with me. The president's upstairs. Go on, shoot. Shut up. Keep walking. <clears throat> None of y'all better move a muscle. Do stop pushing. Unlike you, I am less accustomed to physical violence. You'll get used to it. <laughs> what is it that you want? Our friend. She's in your lab. Really? Tell us where Aerith is. Oh, so she's your friend. I want her to well, be my friend. Well, that I want to make friends with her fictional yes. babies. That might do the trick. Yes. Speaking of some? It's nothing. Just imagining how she might react if I were to present to her your fresh corpses. I would surely be made the godfather. <laughs> An honor I have always sought. Uncle Hojo, they'll call me. <laughs> I promise, <laughs> you will regret this. Hojo's just always brewing up some type of fan fiction. <laughs> What a face. What a look. He, he's got a fucking face. I love it. Hey, buddy. Look Ugh. at you. Hell yeah. I love a famous, like, public uh, uh, domain monster. You can't, you can't beat it. <laughs> I think I saw you on Kickstarter about 400 times. What's up? <laughs> yeah, once you start getting to the Shinra Labs, you start getting a lot of the more messed up, like, experimental creatures. And yeah, this guy, his design's pretty similar to the original, but he's definitely, he just has Cthulhu head now. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> keep it together. <laughs> and honestly, like, the little eyeball bug guys he summons are kind of cute. Mm -hmm. A freaky way, but... Yes, it's my turn. Specimen HO512. That's not a very 
memorable name. Nah. Same as the original, I believe. This will help. Taking a look at him with much better lighting. He's got uh. an extra little skull face in the side there. Yeah. I like that his uh, right shoulder that's got the teeth and stuff, it's also got a little tongue in there. Mm hmm. Also known as a carbuncle. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Yeah, a little bit more of a Cthulhu looking head now than in the past. That, that's sort of an evil Santa Claus thing going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, look at you. You're so shiny. Really shiny eyeballs. Oh, oh no, that's <laughs> a straight upgrade. No, thank you. Yeah. Way better in the remake. The original guys are really funny because it's like, you know, there are like four or five of those in a row in the original game's boss fight, and I guess they had to be really low poly, so... <laughs> Like, yeah. what type of bug monster can we make with about 50 polygons? We gotta design this in 20 minutes out of origami. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, this boss fight is a lot easier if you've got protection against poison, because he's always spewing poison out of his big arm there. And also, yeah, you can do damage to the left arm there. Uh, if you break it off, it'll pressure him, and it'll also mean that he can't poison you for a little while. Mm. But he does have an ability to regrow the arm, of course. Well, Hojo's very good at his job. What do you mm -hmm. expect? Give me your best shot. He's already, like, every scene he's been in, almost, has had a decent amount of him just theorizing about either people's fictional babies or other pairings and things like that. Is that just a part of the process of all of his work? Is this also, is this Cthulhu fan fiction and that's why this guy looks like this? Mm-hmm. What, what would Cthulhu's, you know, babies look like? And who's the other parent? Is there another parent? I don't know, gotta ask Hojo. This is how all these evil monsters are made. Is your daddy a Dagon? Who knows? Hmm. Damn, you're gooey, though. Very gooey. Damn, you're gooey. And with each phase of the boss fight, he makes new, different babies that are more dangerous. Not so Danger babies. Danger babies. In the first phase, these guys could only cast, like, fire or blizzard spells at you, and you could you could silence them even, so they basically just would just sit there and do nothing. Uh, now they've got this spinner move where they just spin at you really fast and it's they're really good at making you flinch and knocking knocking you out of your your attacks mm -hmm. Like a lot of other small critters Tifa's Parry slide is really good at pressuring them just flipping them on their back when you slide mm -hmm. into them Take it over and also, you can, like, try to go after the little guys to, to clear them out and make the fight a little easier, but when you wipe them all out, the, the main guy here will eventually just spit out four new ones out of his shoulder. Right, right. Infinite little guys. So, yeah, it really is an experiment based on babies. <laughs> I want to make a creature that can make babies. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe Hojo's just lonely, is that it? It might be. He's looking for somebody to make babies with, and if he can, mm. he's just gonna make the babies himself. Fuck, it is, I was just thinking more about uh, Hojo there real quick, and I really wanna make a joke, but I can't because it's related to something it won't be in the game until the second remake of game, most likely. God I damn it. put it in in post, it's okay. <laughs> Three versions, there's cut commentary, uncut commentary, knowing the f plot of future remake games commentary. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So, at the very start of this episode, there was that cutscene with the soldiers talking to the cloud, and they, they brought up Kunsol. I mentioned that was like mm -hmm. a, a small reference to the compilation games. There was actually another reference to the compilation games. In the boardroom meeting, Hojo mentions uh, there are two different types of soldiers, S and G types. That is absolutely yeah, yeah. a compilation plot thing. Who knows how much that actually matters to the remakes at all. It could just be a cool little, you know, wink and nudge to the people who know what that is, but... Mm -hmm. gotcha. 
Some soldiers are super and some are just great. <laughs> yeah. Love a great soldier. Great soldiers. So this boss is, like a lot of bosses in the game, actually vulnerable to the stop status effect. So once we stagger him, mm -hmm. you can just freeze him in place. Yes. It's such a... Once you know that you can do this, it feels so good to do. <laughs> and, like, the funny thing is, though, is that if you got... Especially if you got Tifa with both unbridled strengths up, and then you follow it up with true strikes to put the stagger percentage even higher, like, if you're laying into bosses, you will force them into the next phase of their fight before their stagger gauge meter is even empty. Because <laughs> you're just doing too much damage to them. The health bar here has that little... It's just like, no, stop hurting him. He has to go no, to his next no. phase. God, guys, I planned for this, guys. I worked real hard. <laughs> what, you just want me to throw out the next five pages of prep? Come on. Hmm. Play right. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go take a smoke break and figure out what the fuck happens now. <laughs> Thanks. In the later phase of this fight, the gas he shoots out isn't just poison, it also hits you with slow. For this final phase, it's just poison gas everywhere, so you're just constantly taking damage unless you're hiding like the very corners of the room. Mm hmm. There are some bosses in this game that... So, like, if you're fighting Shiva or Leviathan or a couple other bosses, you know, they have multiple phases to their fight, but they don't have the safeguard against, like, being staggered really hard like a lot of story mm -hmm. bosses do. So, like, Shiva, if you're able to stagger her uh, and do enough damage, you will just kill her before she can even get to her next phase. Reeve is the same way, the most vulnerable of all, all the bosses we've seen so far. <laughs> I don't care about anyone's babies, unless they're train babies. <laughs> Do your thing. Here's Carbuncle. <laughs> Yo, I baby. love him. Look at him. When they when they first uh, showed off screenshots of Carbuncle, when it's like, hey, here's a pre-order bonus summon, everyone was upset because everyone was like, his head is too big. And I saw him, I was just like, his head is the perfect size. <laughs> that is the correct size for that little baby. Can be bigger. More head. <laughs> More, bigger forehead, please. I want that baby to just topple over. <laughs> Useless legs. He's just dragging his head everywhere, yeah. Yeah, the little bugs now, on top of doing spinner, they will run up to you and just self-destruct. So having Carbuncle here is actually pretty nice to just cast Protect on everybody. And also in this final fight, the specimen will run over to these tanks full of Mako juice and will just start sucking it up with his big arm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do enough damage to him, he'll suck up enough Mako that he can, uh... He'll do that big arena-filling gas attack again. Uh. And, and cover everything with the, the gas that hurts you. No yeah. elemental weakness on this guy. I really thought, like, a lot of the other, like, mutated things that he'd be weak to ice, but nah, he just hit him with whatever. Yeah. Also a big upgrade from the original game's setting. I really like the ominous red floor lighting in, <laughs> in here. <laughs> you don't put that in there unless you know you're evil. Yeah, yeah. And the most evil thing is that, okay, sure, Hojo's destroying his own uh, laboratory to get to you, but he doesn't have to fix this. No. This is Reeve's job to repair everything. <laughs> yeah. God, do people break shit here just so they can just make Reeve's day worse? Everyone clearly <laughs> yeah. fucking hates Reeve, except for his assistant, <laughs> who told him, don't voice complaints, you'll die. <laughs> Even the mayor doesn't like him. <laughs> Think 
I'm waiting. Poor Reeve. Poor Reeve. He tried so hard to, to grow that beard so people would think it's cool and it didn't work. <laughs> Bring it! Take it easy. Alright, guys, I know you're kicking my ass. Can I stand up real quick so I can... <laughs> okay. I want to go, go out good. I want to dissolve into sparklies on my feet, okay? I've earned that. <laughs> so it's very easy to, you know, because it's very urgent that Hojo's running away and stuff, but if we take a look around here, you know, Look at all these tubes and stuff. Most of them are just full of full of Mako juice. But if you, you search around, especially if you played the original, you know there should be an extra thing in here if you're looking around. Mm hmm. Hmm. But if we take a look at the really big container over here, who's this? Who's? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. That's that's my favorite Pokemon. Yeah, that is that is straight up a Pokemon. <laughs> When I first played Final Fantasy VII as a kid, I had just finished playing, like, I had just started getting into Pokemon right around the same time, and so I saw that and I was just like, this is just like Charmander, this is so good. <laughs> All that fighting and it didn't wake up from his nap. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Hey, are you friends with that cat? Hmm, you're kind of a cat. Understand what that means. <laughs> the results I, provided by my so many things are just obsessed with the idea of recording combat can. data, and I. What is that? Why do people want that? It's just cool we'll tapes of guys back. fighting. Look okay, at. Are you just studying game tape? I guess. <laughs> now you see, he did a cool flip and hit this guy with a big sword. Don't, don't fall for that. You mean to tell me that she is your personal property? She only came here to save Marlene. I'm afraid you misunderstand. It's some. It's just because it's clearly an abstract thing, but they talk about it like it's so concrete. I yeah. Really like I, I have five pounds of combat data right here. <laughs> extraordinary specimens that will change the world as we know it. Do try to be considerate. Deal with that. All set. <laughs> Deal with my aura. <laughs> I love that Hojo just sent out, like, probably one of his bigger experimental monsters out. It got mm -hmm. owned, and then he tells six rank-and-file guys, like, hey, you're gonna have to deal with that, and also, I think you definitely can kill them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've looked at the combat data. Yeah. I believe in you guys. You guys got this. <laughs> oh, man, we're on Hojo's combat data, data duty today. This sucks. <laughs> It's got like a 40% mortality rate, like... <laughs> I know because it's in the data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Enough of you! Looks like your models got it wrong! Yes. An unknown variable, perhaps. Well, no matter. Reinforcements will soon arrive. But will they get here in time to save you from me? Why are you a soldier? Yeah, the super type. Yeah. No, not quite. Oh, now I recall. My memory was mistaken. My boy, you weren't a soldier. Ex-soldier. That's where you're getting tripped. Ex-soldier. What? Oh, what is this fascinating phenomenon? What's happening? Where are 
are you taking me? What are those things up to this time? Cloud! <gasps> Barrett. Got it. Stand back. <laughs> Hey, did they let you pet the kitty? <laughs> I hope they did. You came for me. Yep. You good? I'm great. Here come some of my favorite enemies in the game. Look at them. Good to fight a Rick Diaz. Oh, you won't save it for later. I love the armored shock troopers. I love them. Yeah, just, there we go, right in the lumbar. Oh, yep. that's been tight. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, looking at the armored shock troopers, these guys got a pretty big design, uh, upgrade design. In the original game, for some reason, I didn't parse them as being guys in robot suits. I thought they were just in, like, weird padded armor or something. Yeah, that's... Hmm. <laughs> I mean, limitations of the time, yeah, but just... it. It's, uh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> They're so much cooler looking now. They either boost at you with their laser swords trying to impale you or, you know, gun arm. I love how slow they are. Like, this looks like it's not a good suit of armor to actually be in. <laughs> Okay, now we just need uh, uh, Barrett to also say bring it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, all three right in a row. Everybody, everybody get it brought in. These guys have some resistance to physical attacks, but magic is makes, like, staggers them super easy. Uh huh. like so. There's an extra gimmick to these guys. If you don't completely dis take out all their health when they're staggered, they will use their eject move which causes mm -hmm. their suit of armor to self-destruct uh -huh. and, and then the guy inside will pop out with full health and these are special shock troopers that have fucking roller skates on yes, yes. watch at the yes <laughs> look you at him go the bird inside yes <laughs> look yes. at him ah uh, i thought because I, I always loved these guys in the original game. They did the same thing. Uh, I always thought that in a remake, they might get rid of roller skate soldiers. No, they just make them sassier. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, their feet are backwards. I don't know why it's for speed, it is. speed, baby. I guess it's for speed, but these guys' designs, on the other hand, are basically exactly the same. Just some more detail no, on them, of course. that's super cool. Yeah. I think they might be cooler in the original. <laughs> Maybe it's just the pose. But. Yeah, the pose is really good, uh, and their uh, their claw fingers are more defined in the original design. I guess they're a little n more normal size, but yeah, dude, I I love the roller skating shock troopers. They're really hard to hit unless you got Baird, of course. I got this. Also, one of the things. Like, because this first remake is, you know, just a chunk of the original game, uh, mm -hmm. it does lead to one kind of nice thing in that all the way through to the very end of this game, you are still getting new equipment and you're constantly still encountering new enemy types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're never getting bored of the enemies because there's still, like, a lot of new enemies to, to meet. This guy seems like a guy you could talk to, you know? Mm-hmm. He seems like he might have an anti-authority streak. Yeah. Uh, he also just shoots little tornadoes by spinning really fast. I mean, he's definitely got the soul of an artist. Just look how he moves. <laughs> Keep it together. Let me handle this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were juicing. They dropped adrenaline. <laughs> you okay? I hate to see it. Thank you. No biggie. Let's get out of here. <laughs> He's got tribal tats. Yeah. The hell was that thing? We need to go. <laughs> Aerith! What the? 
That was her ride. <laughs> yes, finally, the new mount mechanic in Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> what, you thought they only rode chocobos around here? Come on. <laughs> Is that who she's supposed to have the babies with? <sighs> Damn, Hojo, you into some shit. In the original game, literally, yes. <laughs> Hojo is fucking weird. When we go through the original game, we'll get there and, and talk more about that. But yes, that was literally his plan in the original game. What? You want to go? Stop. <laughs> this child's a friend. More than friends, if things go his way. Mm. Okay, now scratch it behind the ears. Should have an incredibly proper British accent. A fascinating question. Oh. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You asked what it is. Hmm. I am that which you see before you. Nothing more. I'd appreciate it if we simply left it at that. Agreed. <sighs> Should have been Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Hold on, let me do my pose from the concept art. Red 13. The designation given to me by Hojo. Then you must have another name. What is it? Eric. Sprinkles. <laughs> Lenore. He got away. So, we're gonna go get the son of a bitch. Damn, those roller skaters took a lot out of you, huh? <laughs> Put pipes everywhere in this town. <laughs> Cloud! We really should have stopped them earlier. I love that they're still fucked up. They still got bruises everywhere. <laughs> You know, Reno, I think you might be due for some R&R. &R. I can't even spell that. You know, Reno, I think you really are ready for some Reno and Reno. Nah, I'm good. What are we going to do about Sector 7? <sighs> we are going to do nothing. Been thinking. Was all that necessary? Had we refused, someone else would have completed the task. We have spared that someone the burden of a guilty conscience. Is R&R &R the Reno and Rude ship name? Oh fuck it is, isn't it? 
Yeah, nope. Let's try another tack then. They were a sacrifice to balance the scales. Say what? After everything we'd taken from the planet, we were due to give something back. Do you actually believe that? Does it matter? Yes, understood. The VP needs us. All right, I just want to. Okay, here's a tweet I made on April 22nd, 2020. Uh huh. Red 13 looks like if Tony the Tiger were in a band, kicked heroin, and now tells teens all across America how he wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Christ's love. 